So how do you graph a sine function? So I'm going to give you a basic sine function here. This is the general, kind of the generally how we write it. Uh, um, the function at x equals a times sine of b times x. So um, how do you graph that? What does it look like? Well, we can plug it into GeoGebra, but there's a couple things we need to, to know about a sine function, or a cosine cosine function for that matter. But you, you always end up with a wave. And so you got to go back to your science class and think about your, you know, when you have a wave, what are some parts of the wave that we need to talk about? Well, you know, first off, you've got a center line typically where your top of your waves and the bottom of your waves are the same distance. And so that distance is called amplitude. So that's amplitude. Amplitude. There we go. Um, and notice this amplitude, these numbers are usually the same. Just one's positive, one's negative. But the distance, that amplitude, is the same. The other thing that we're going to be concerned with here is the period. And period is the distance along the x-axis um, in order, you know, how long does it take for it to make one cycle? Dog on it. There we go. So it starts here. It goes up, comes back down, then goes up. Now, at this point, that is gonna that is one cycle of this curve, and it continues on as far as you want it to go. But this distance from here to here, that is the period. Okay. So that length is the period. And so let me show you how to find all that stuff. So first off, you have to think that, you know, the trigonometry is a study of triangles, and specifically the angles of a triangle. And so this value here, these are angles. And it's, if you don't know what a radian is, you want to go find out because you need radians to solve this. Because um, most of these are written in, you know, in math texts in general, are written with radians as your, as your um, x value. So think, think in terms of that. So um, for instance, you could just make a table and graph these and you know start out with you know think in terms of radians so maybe you want to do 45 degrees which is pi over 4 so you would plug that in and get a value and you could do that as much as you want but let me just show you quickly kind of the tricks to, to graph this thing so the tricks are this the a value is your amplitude so a stands for amplitude so in our case in our example problem a, my computer's running a little slow. Now, B, oh, and I had used the lowercase b, so sorry. B tells me um, your frequency uh, of the wave, the frequency of a wave from 0 to 2 pi, from 0 to to 2 pi. So and notice our b in our case is 2. And now let me show you that. There it is. There's b, the number in front of x. So frequency, uh, b tells you the frequency of the wave from 0 to 2 pi. So our frequency is 2. So it, you know we get two full cycles in a full circle. A full circle is 2 pi. So um, to find your period, Hopefully you remember from uh, um, from your days in science class that period is equal to one over your frequency. They're inverse, inversely proportional. So uh, period in our case, and this is is two pi divided by your frequency, since since we're dealing with uh, how many the frequency is in two pi's. You know it happens twice. It's two pi divided by two. So our period in this case is pi. So every time we reach pi degrees, which is 180 degrees, we have a 
have one full cycle. So this is what this graph looks like. So if you were to graph this, okay, sine graphs, so the, let me just show you a sine, just a general sine graph. Sine graphs always start at, so this is not our function, this is, this is a new one, so we'll come back to this one in a second. I'll do it in red. Um, when you have a sine graph, I generally like to, to put everything in terms of each mark represents uh, pi over 2 or 90 degrees. So this is pi, um, this is uh, 2 pi. Um, so a sine function always starts at 0 and ends at, at 2 pi and its amplitude is 1. So this is kind of what a just a general sine graph looks like. So it crosses there at 0, then comes back to 1. This particular um, equation, now I'll, I'll graph G with that, and we'll do it in green so you can kind of see the difference. First off, we have an amplitude of 4. So, I'll go back here, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the other difference is that um, it'll start at 0, because sine of 0 is, 4 times sine of 0 is still 0. But it's going to go up to 4 and down to negative 4. So, but, and it's also going to create one full cycle by the time it gets to pi. So it's going to be done with a cycle here. And it'll have two cycles by the time we get to here. So in this particular graph, it would start here and go down really fast, <laughs> come up, be at zero here, go up to positive four and come back down again, and then do it again. So it'd come down to negative four. Well, I, sorry, I went to negative three, up to four, and back down again. And so that is the cycle. So I'll cheat since I miscounted. Um, there you go. Now it's four. <laughs> that's just rough sketching it. I mean, that, granted, that's ugly, but that generally gives you the idea of what that, what everything is. So you got a period, you've got a frequency that you're dealing with. Notice we have our frequency was two because we have two crests and two troughs between zero and here's two pi, um, and our period is one pi. So one cycle completes by the time we get to pi. And if you want to look in this, look at this, these two equations in GeoGebra, that's probably going to give you a little better idea. So let me give you a new function here. And we'll go ahead and, and uh, graph these. So, whoops, let me zoom out so we can kind of see what's going on. So the parent function is just y equals sine and at x. That's just a general sine function. And there's what it looks like. And notice 6 point, you know, you got to think 2 pi is 6.28. Well, if we put a point there, let's see if it'll let me stick a point there. Whoops, there it did. Whoop, I just was getting click happy. Let me undo some of those. There we go. So 6.28 is 2 pi. So notice the one cycle, if I trace that out, starts at 0, goes up to 1. At pi, we're at uh, 0 again. Then we go to negative 1. And then we complete the cycle at 6.28, which is 2 pi. Now our function should, you should have a crest that goes clear up here to 4, down to negative 4, up to 4, down to negative 4. Um, twice by the time we get here to A. So let's plug that in and see what it looks like. So uh, G at X equals 4 sine of 2X. Boom. And there it is. And now you can kind of also see how it continues forever, but notice it goes up to 4, down, there's pi, not, not pi, sorry, there's pi right there. And down to negative 4, up to pi, up again to 4, down again, and then up again to 2 pi. 
So that's generally how you can just look at an equation and get kind of the information you need um, for sine functions. So hope this helps you kind of understand those. May at least maybe gave you some practice if you're trying to work on these. And uh, I'll see you next time. Well, let me do one more example. I we got I got a few more minutes. Sorry. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and just give you one more example. Make sure you got it. So let's say I gave you y equals one half sine of uh, x over two. Okay. So you know, see if you know what this stuff is. So amplitude, frequency, period. Okay. Here you go. So amplitude would be one half because that's that number there. Frequency, since it's x over two, uh, my b value, and I guess I shouldn't have called it f, my b value is one half as well because you could write this as one half sine of one half times x, and it'd be the same thing because there's a little one there. There's no number. So my period is two pi divided by one half. Well, when you take when you divide a fraction, that's two pi over one times two over one, because you flip and multiply. So I complete one full cycle by the time we get to four pi. So now let's graph that thing. Okay. So this one looks quite different. So when we graph this one, now my x scale my angles, this is 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and, and then it's only going to go up, so if this is 1 and this is negative 1, it's only going to go up a half and down a half. And so you start at 0, um, and by the time we get one full cycle here, the period of this is 4 pi, and so this would be 2 pi. And so it would also end up being zero here. And so if you connect those, so there's up a half, down, and then up. Wow, it went a little too low. But that's generally what it looks like. Now, what does that look like in GeoGebra compared to the others? This is kind of neat to see. Y equals, instead of 1 half, I'll put in 0.5, sine of 0.5x. Hit enter, and there you can see it. Let me hide these other two. I'll leave the parent function up and hide that four sign. But notice, it only goes half as high, and by the time you get to two pi, it's only halfway done with the cycle. And so it's clear over here to 12 point whatever, um, or two, four pi, that we get the full cycle completed. So this is a really narrow, elongated wave. So there you go. There's another example. So hopefully that all helps you understand this. Gives you two examples to go by. And uh, I'll see you next time.